And in the following demonstration, we'll use SimCenter model correlation to correlate the modes between two different analyses. Here we have a natural modes solution for a, an arm that has been meshed with two different types of elements. We've got tets on the left and bricks on the right. And I've solved for the first 30 modes with no constraints. So we've got a free free modal solution. And we could of course uh, decompose those results but it's much easier to use model correlate. Here you just turn on the model correlation toolbar and import our brick results into our TET model. Here we'll call those brick modes. And then we'll do our shape correlation. Here's where we'll select our brick modes as being our reference solution and our TET modes being our work solution. There's a couple of different methods you could use. Uh, we'll leave it as the default with proximity. And that will match up uh, the modes for you automatically. And then you can visualize that with a modal assurance criterion plot. Here you can see by the shape of it that things line up very well between the brick modes and the tet modes. Another way you can see that is by listing the mode shape pairs uh, with the linear scale. And you can see uh, if the line's not quite horizontal that maybe the modes are off by just a little bit. If you want to see exactly how much they're off, you can dump that information into a spreadsheet and you can see the frequency percent error there between the reference and the work modes between the, the bricks and the tets. All right, so that looks really good. Let's take a situation where maybe the modes don't line up quite so well. Um, here I have another simulation model that I've created off the same geometry where I've mid-surfaced it and shell meshed it and we'll bring in those brick modes as the reference solution and do a mode shape comparison between the brick modes and the shell modes. So here if we do our Mac plot we'll see that that things don't line up quite so well with the heat plot and if we want to see that with the mode shape pairs, what you'll see is using the, the MAC method, you can see that uh, the modes don't always line up one to one. Sometimes uh, the mode numbers are a little bit different, a uh, little bit different there. You can, however, uh, tell it that you want to use sequential shapes for doing the, the matching. Uh, and if you use the uh, linear plot there, you can see uh, in some cases that the, uh, the lines are in fact crossing uh, to find the best shape comparison between the modes even though the frequencies are off by a bit. And that concludes the demonstration.